Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. We are at the Tamarack Wildlife Center today, and we're going to learn about all the things that go on here. And, and I, from what, I, what I've heard, injured birds, injured animals can come here and they get taken care of. So um, stay with us. This is going to be a fun show. Well, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Carol Holmgren from Tamarack Wildlife Center, and I'm the executive director and head licensed wildlife rehabilitator. Well, so Carol, so what's, uh, who's that with you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. This is Ruby. She's a red-tailed hawk, and she is one of our raptor ambassadors. So that means that we have permits from the state and federal government to take care of her and share her on education programs. And she, each one of our ambassadors has some disability where they wouldn't okay. survive in the wild. And you may notice that she's missing an eye. And for our diurnal or daytime raptors, they really need that binocular vision to be successful hunters. So she gets to stay with us and she's a phenomenal ambassador. So can we do a little history? Can we talk sure. about how this whole got started? Yeah. Or? Yeah, it's pretty exciting to me. Okay. It start, the center started in 1989 under okay. the direction of our first rehabilitator and director, Harriet Wilson. Okay. And Harriet lived on Tamarack Lake. Okay. And I actually volunteered with her oh, wow. when I first okay. moved to town. So Tam, um, Tamarack was the wildlife center and rehabilitation was started by Harriet. So that's how the name Tamarack came along. Exactly. That's where it started. Exactly. Even, even now you're closer to Woodcock than you are to Tamarack. I know. Right? Okay. Yep. A few years after Harriet got things started, Sue DeArmond came on the scene okay. and assisted Harriet. And for a while we had two centers, one on Tamarack Lake at Harriet's home and one in this location, which was originally the home of Sue DeArmond. So we're located here okay. outside of Sagertown. Okay. And then the center moved to Sagertown completely and Harriet retired. Sue um, headed things up for quite a few years until she was ready to step down from this role in 2012. And then I stepped into the role okay. of director at that time and we've continued to be here and serve our community, serve okay. our region. Now let me ask you, how do customers sure. like this guy, how do, how do they get here? How does that happen? Sure. So we mentioned we're a wildlife rehabilitation and education center. So yeah, the, the primary motivating force for our formation was to treat injured, orphaned, and sick wildlife. And really the primary people bringing our patients to us are the public, people okay. who find a wild animal that they think needs help. And we're here for them. We're here for anybody who thinks they've found an animal in crisis. And sometimes we think an animal needs help when it doesn't really. So we also try to help people understand or decipher, does this animal really need to get to help or is it really okay? And okay. we have um, trained volunteers on our wildlife helpline 365 days a year to wow. answer questions. Okay. We typically are responding to messages hourly from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m. So we're taking care of patients and doing other things, so we're typically going to do a call back, but we're here to answer questions. And then if a patient needs help, we can help the public determine, is that something that you can bring in okay. to us? Or, or do we to need pick, to pick up? Sometimes, sometimes we can pick up, um, or we may also suggest, you know, for any very powerful or any endangered or threatened species, we may suggest the game commission. Okay. So sometimes we that can assist be with. That was my next question. Yeah. It's like, you know, how do you get, how do you get the animals here? Right. So so it, someone might actually bring the animal here. Now yes. this is now this is mm -hmm. say the name of the road again. 
We're on Stull, Stull Road. Road. S T U L L. So it's between Road. where you would go to Woodcock Lake if you're coming north mm -hmm. of Meadville. It's between Woodcock Lake and Cambridge Springs. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so you turn. So if you're going north, you turn left, mm -hmm. and you're about a mile or so down Correct. down there. Okay. We we ask that people have their admission approved to make sure so you that call ahead of time. so that you call ahead of time okay. so that we can be sure it's a patient that we can treat that really does need help and that it's one that we can handle because there's some species that we may not be able to treat but we can always answer questions and refer people to the appropriate organization if it's something we can't handle now yet. what are the what are the typical most most likely customers of, of <laughs> So, um, in turn, I will say I'm a raptor specialist. Okay. So, for our raptors, red-tailed hawks are the most common okay. customers or patients. I think of this is a wildlife hospital to some extent. So, this, they are my patients. So, red-tailed hawks. We also have of those raptors, great horned owls, bald eagles are always on the top ten of the uh, numbers, top um, numbers for raptors. Uh, Cooper's hawks. Barn owls, great horned owls, okay. etc. Um, sometimes we'll get falcons like peregrines or kestrels. So those are the raptors that okay. we treat. But we also, in terms of sheer numbers, the leader of the top, of the pack is usually cottontails because oh. they have so many babies. Oh, there's um, that's and for sure. and they it's are area, so abundant. Bet. If people's um, you know, maybe they have an interaction with a lawnmower or a weed whacker or a dog or a cat. Uh, we end up get, treating a lot of a lot of cottontails and possums and squirrels and, and things like we that We just as live well. a few miles away from here and we walk our dogs every day and I, I think almost every single day there's a rabbit that, that's just in the neighborhood that just runs back yep. and forth across the street in front of us and the yep. dogs are, you know, they're all excited to run after that right. rabbit. But yeah. I know what you're talking about when you're, you know, when you're, so um, I was, I told you the story a little bit ago. I was I was over um, mm -hmm. with a friend. We were going to pick up some lumber from some trees that got knocked down at a friend's place over by Sugar Lake, and we went past a field. And there's two bald eagles in the field fighting over a rabbit. And apparently one of them caught the rabbit, and the other one was trying to take the rabbit away from the other bald eagle. Some and they were like on their tails and like yeah. clawing, clawing at each other. So I'm wondering, if, like, if one of them had gotten hurt, could that have been a customer of yours? It, it could have been. I will say, typically. The wildlife that come to us are usually injured or um, sick due to some interaction with humans that don't, didn't go so Not well. With each other. Okay. So the okay. vast majority of our patients are here because of things like a window strike, oh, wow. or being caught okay. by a cat, which is a non-native predator. Oh wow! Being okay. clipped by a car, or ingesting a toxin that humans have introduced into the uh. environment. Okay. So that's one of the reasons that it feels good to help the wildlife that we treat is because we've had a role in typically in their not doing so well. So we are here to treat if there um, is injury from a wildlife to wildlife conflict, but that's very pretty rare for us to I was, be dealing. I was watching. I'd never seen anything happen like that before. Yeah. And, and I, I I assumed that one of the one of the eagles had caught the rabbit and was going to eat it, and the other one said, "Hey, there's there's dinner. Yeah. I'm going to go Probably. get some dinner." And Probably. so they were, I, yeah. I assumed they were fighting over the uh, fighting yeah. over the dinner yeah. there. Yeah. Um, that was what, really a, what a special sighting and something that would not have happened a number of years ago when I moved to the state in '88. We only had three nesting pairs of bald eagles in the entire Holy state wow. because of the effects of DDT in our environment. And fortunately, in 72, we realized there was a problem because people observed the population crash. And then they were placed on the endangered species list and collaborative efforts between the Game Commission and biologists, falconers, and, and others helped with a reintroduction project. And in wow. my lifetime, your lifetime, we've seen the rebounding of those eagles. When I started here in 88, and when I started in the state in 88, very few people had seen a bald eagle and how that has changed. And that to me is inspiring because it shows that when we see a problem and work together, we can make a difference mm. for that wild animal and for our children and our children's children. Now, when uh, we have our family has a cottage over at Canada Lake, mm -hmm. and for for years and years and years, there was a bald eagle's nest on the 
I guess that's the south end of the lake. Um, and every year there would be babies, and you'd, you know we we would always be paddled. I, I think we did this on the show mm -hmm. one time a number of years back. We were doing a kayak trip around the lake, mm -hmm. and of course we had to stop and get a, get footage of the yeah. bald eagle's nest up there. And you'd see all the little heads, all the little heads popping up. Um, and apparently the father. Got hit by a, got hit by a vehicle, and I think was done in. I think was killed by the vehicle, and the mother hung around for a while, um, and we saw the mother uh, several more times after that. But there were tons of babies, and this mm -hmm. this, oh, probably five years maybe that there were that there were you know batches of babies every mm -hmm. year. So I now I assume the babies fly off, and they don't have a white tail for a number of years, right? Correct. So bald eagles have a slightly different coloration each age of their life up until they reach adulthood, which is between five and six years old. Oh, wow. So they don't okay. get that fully white head. I was guessing the white head came until, at two or three years old, but no, you're saying five until or six five years or old. five or six, okay. and that's the point at which they become breeding age. And those okay. youngsters will stay around their family once they start learning how to fly. They'll stick around for between four and 12 weeks, and then they disperse, and they can travel thousands of okay. miles over the subsequent years, and then they typically come back within of the vicinity of their home nest tree on the way to over to find the cottage one time this year, we were driving over and we were going up um what's the name of that hill where the where the tractor place at the top of the hill okay and a bald eagle flew right over us and it's like oh wow i wonder if that's you know one of the ones from over you know from over yeah. canada to lake we were yeah. we were wondering that yeah. but it was just sailing around flying on and it, it had a white tail and a white mm -hmm. head and it was a little speckly so i'm assuming it maybe so maybe it was just four or five years old or whatever right and some adults will still maintain some speckliness a speckly? okay but okay. um especially four and five that would be pretty typical for okay. an eagle of that okay. age mm -hmm. so is that i mean is is that getting more common around Crawford County now that to there's... To see eagles? Yes. See, seeing them? Okay. Yes. And in the early days of our center, we would treat a bald eagle, maybe one or two every other year. And when I came in 2006, we were <gasps> aghast that we treated three oh, wow. in one year. Okay. And now we're averaging 16 oh, my most, most years of, wow. of late. And that's really a reflection that that population is rebounding. So that's a good thing that, that, that um, we have higher numbers of eagles and then as a corollary, then we are gonna have more that get into trouble. I will say of, in a typical year, our patients, our eagle patients, typically one third are hit by vehicles. So we can help eagles by slowing down if we see them feeding on the road. They are oh. majestic, powerful predators, but they also are happy to have a free meal. If somebody said a road so on the road, they're going to... So if there's a yeah, roadkill, yeah. that's kind of like, you know, the fast food drive through for a raptor, and they may feed on it. If people are used to crows flying off at their approach, at their vehicle's approach, they may expect an eagle to do the same, but an eagle is a top predator, and they're gonna stick so tight to defend gonna, their food. It's not gonna leave the, So they're oh, okay. more likely, so humans kind of get trained by crows to not slow down, and then we can end up accidentally hitting an eagle. So, so if we can slow down, if you see a hawk or an eagle in the road, that helps. So that's one third of our eagle admissions. The other third, top, tied for t first place, is lead poisoning. That's what I was going to ask you. So it, yeah, okay. so lead toxicity and the way, so we know Flint, Michigan, lead's a neurotoxin. There are no safe levels for humans or for wildlife. Raptors, including red tails or eagles, if they ingest it, they have a very acidic stomach. And so oh. any metal that goes in, they have a muscular gizzard. So any metal that they ingest gets ground up and metabolized into their blood system. So it takes less to poison a hawk or an eagle than it does a raccoon or a human. Wow. Okay. At the same time, there's no safe level. So the size of the amount of lead equal to a grain of rice wow. is more than enough to kill an adult bald eagle. So is it is it complicated to treat them for those kinds of things and, is, and other ailments? Is it, is it complicated? Yeah, it's very complicated to treat them. Okay. And especially if they are so sick that they're grounded from those lead levels, um, it's very difficult to get them back. So mm. we will do our best and, it, and we have equipment. We have thousands of dollars invested in having 
equipment to analyze their blood upon admission and to have drugs ready all the time. So we have to compound drugs every three months using a pharmacy so that we are ready to treat as soon as that animal gets here. Wow. At the same time, treatment's tough. So we try to educate the public, how are they getting this? And it's typically through animals that are shot by farmers or gardeners, gardeners or hunters, because we do get eagles in, in August and September when people are shooting nuisance animals getting into their crops as well as during hunting season. And so gut piles or woodchucks that are left out. Sometimes people will think that if an animal is shot, there may be an exit wound, and so there's no metal remaining in the animal. Um, most common ammunition is lead, of course. So, um, but lead's very soft. And even if there's an exit wound, typically 30% of the mass still be is some. still in the tissues. Okay. So if people can either switch to an alternative ammunition or bury or make sure that any remains left out in the field are not accessible to our avian scavengers. That really helps. Okay, so down the road, if I come across an eagle yeah. that's injured, that, that appears yeah. to be injured or sick or whatever, I don't pick it up myself, I call you guys. Correct, they okay. are really powerful. So if you find an injured eagle, we don't want you to get hurt. So our recommendation would be to, to notify both us and the Game Commission. For eagles, the Game Commission wants first dibs on capture and bringing them to us because they want to keep the public safe. If they're busy, and because game wardens have a lot to do, if they're busy, they may ask us to help. Okay. Um, but it's also nice to know if someone is concerned because we are, as soon as we hear that there's an eagle that someone's concerned about, we will be asking for photo and video. Okay. You may get a faster response from us than the game commission, depending on what they're tied up doing. And we will um, help analyze information about whether that animal really needs help. And we also start, it also gives us clues about, oh, I think I've got a wing fracture. I need to prepare these materials. Oh, wow. This looks like lead toxicity. I need to have my drugs ready to go. This is a youngster. Is it a nestling that's down and injured? Is it a age where they're just learning to leave the, the nest and we really think it's a healthy fledgling. So this is, this is our profession okay. and we are very happy to analyze information and then get ready. So, so we are doing a training for game officers on August 22nd, they're, excuse me, October 22nd. Okay. They are our boss um, because they hold our permits but we work together as a team okay. for the benefit of wildlife. And they respect that sometimes there's areas that we may know a little bit more about than they do in terms of analyzing age, especially age of eagles and whether something needs help. And so we're gonna be talking with them about how they can identify when animals need to get to a rehabilitator. Let me tell you a commission story from last year. We had a neighbor who was, um, and this would have been right at the time when the bears were starting to wake up from their hibernation. Yeah. And the bear came after a woman on her deck and the dog jumped in and the bear killed the dog. And so the game commission got called in yeah. and they did. They were able to trap the bear. And I think they took it to the Allegheny National Forest, I think is what, mm -hmm. is what they did. But um, that, they're busy guys they're, and they're women. Not, they're not just out in hunting season. Yep. They're out there no, all the time. Absolutely. This was, this was like in yeah. March or April or whatever, yeah. whenever this no. happened. And, and uh, I guess they were able to trap a couple of other ones okay. that were that were relatives of this of this particular okay. bear and took them all took them all yeah. out of the area. And um, yeah, I, I, yeah, they have a very important job to do. Really, really like holy mackerel. I mean, the bear was going after the going after the neighbor, and the dog jumped in, and yeah. the bear killed the dog. You know, I, yeah. wow. Um, that just yeah, and that's that is pretty unusual, um, but it is important that people take preventative measures to not attract bears and help prevent wildlife human conflict. And that can help both the wildlife and wildlife rehabilitators and game officers. Because sometimes we inadvertently create conflict by leaving food out or by creating attractive nuisances. So um, we can work together. And that might have been what you just said, that there might have been a 
a, a grilling on the deck or whatever, and the bear smelled mm -hmm. the food and was coming after that, and then didn't see any food but went after the woman, and, yeah. and then the dog jumped in and killed the dog. So yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing, I, I guess, is very, very rare that that happens, but it actually happened. I mean, it yep. ha happened yep. in the area yep. here. No, so. we have to be aware. Okay, so so. You, you have an event coming up this weekend, so we can do. I ask you about that? Yeah, I'd love love to talk about. We have our annual open house, okay, and that's usually occurring at this time of year. And you know, much of the time, we are a hospital, so we admit patients, and we will go out on education programs, but we don't. Um, we aren't a zoo where we have lots of displays. We do have three ambassadors, raptors that people are welcome to come and view, but we don't have extensive. Um, displays for the public to come at all the, all times. Okay. So this is a wonderful event. It's my favorite day of the year, <laughs> and it's free. There's activities for all ages. We'll have kids' craft, kids' activities, um, displays about wildlife. You can learn about how to um, live more peacefully with wildlife, how to prevent issues, as well as get to meet um, some of our ambassador raptors, such as Ruby. We have seven ambassador raptors that will be on display to experience up close and personal. Oh, that's great. A live, non-releasable possum nicknamed Tammy for Tamrak. <laughs> uh, another uh, ambassador turtle, some other herptiles, native herptiles, so you can have an experience of our native wildlife and uh, interact with displays, kids' crafts, free food. You can tour our examination room and lab because we do on-site x-ray um, of patients and other lab okay. tests to help okay. us sort out what is wrong with them. Our sponsoring veterinarian, Dr. Donnie Konsla, will be here and answering questions. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's a, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to help wildlife, and you'll see a lot of hands on deck. You can meet our rehabilitation staff, our educator, lots of volunteers. We'll also have a raffle and um, some swag for sale. And the other thing that Ruby is reminding of, me of is that we will, Ruby is a red-tailed hawk. She's stretching her wings. Okay. Um, she needs to stay with us because she has a disability, but okay. we have two red-tailed hawks that have completed their rehabilitation. Uh, so they're healed up. And okay. if the weather is appropriate, which is looking like we have a good forecast, we will release one hawk at 2 p.m. Awesome. And another one at 3 p.m. And people can Is witness that. Is it okay that. with you if we come and try and get some footage We'd of that? We'd love going on? that. We'd that love would, that. That would be great. We'll try. Yeah. We'll try and do that. Yep. Okay. And then just to let people know, we don't have a large parking area, so we will have um, parking on site right here at the center for people who are handicapped or need okay. a little extra help. Aside from that, um, you may be need to be parking park, along our roads park down the street okay. and park down the street and then um, just enjoy a pleasant walk awesome, awesome. down to, to enjoy everything well that'll be really interesting to see a bird that's healed up now and to get to get to go back get get, get to go back to a normal normal environment back, back to normal nature yeah. here yeah and it makes my heart sing that's what we that's what we do it for our goal is always to help wildlife get healthy and go back home. That's awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for having us out today. And yeah, I'm looking forward to coming and seeing that seeing that bird get get released. That sounds fantastic. I look bird. forward to see, sharing that with you. Thank you. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What a beautiful day. I hope you're having a fantastic time. I'm Carol Holmgren, executive director and one of the licensed rehabilitators here, and we are so so happy to have you here to join in this day and in the special work of Tamarack. In a few minutes, we'll be getting ready to release this rehabilitated red tail talk. But before we do that, I wanna say a few words of thanks. I wanna thank everybody who makes this place possible and this day possible. Many, many hands go into treating our wildlife, putting on education programs, and especially for this event, um, getting it ready. So can you raise your hand if you are a volunteer for Tamarack? I've got many, many people and folks are all at their stations. Thank you so much. We have people who staff phones, change our patients, do scrubbing, do laundry. We have people bake food, prepare, get our educational displays ready. 
um, people who help transport, many, many hands go into this place. Our board members are absolutely critical as well. I also want to thank our staff. We have a core staff that kind of um, magnify our efforts by um, guiding our volunteers. So we have our rehabilitation manager, Jessica Schombert. And our outreach and education manager, Melissa Goodwill. And somewhere is Barbara, our office manager. She's a jack of all trades, but she's been doing lots of things. So these guys work really hard on a daily basis um, and especially getting ready for this event. So TAMRAC is here because we all recognize that we're part of a community that includes not just the people who live in the house next door, but it also includes wildlife. And our mission here is to rehabilitate injured and sick wildlife in order to help them go back to the wild, like this hawk, and also to share education so that people can be inspired and know their neighbors and work to have a um, community that is healthy for all of us. At TAMRAC, we also support our public health by participating in research projects and counseling public who have found wildlife. So we partner with biologists, game commission, and others to track diseases and also communicate about how to keep everybody safe depending on what's going on. So we um, serve that role as well. I mentioned we've been around since 1989 and we continue to uh, improve and grow in the ways that we serve wildlife and you. So um, in recent years, we have tripled the number of patients that we are admitting. So we've gone from 400 patients in 2016 to the last few years, we've been exceeding 1,000 um, and sometimes hitting 1,200. So uh, we're doing that with the help of our volunteers and also um, some increased staffing is really making that possible. And none of us could do this without financial support. And so that's a real way that you make this possible, that you help this hawk or a snake that has been treated for an injury or a possum or a squirrel. We treat a lot of different species here. And when you support Tamarack, you are really touching the lives of both wildlife and humans. So please know that. How many of you are supporters of Tamarack? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just, and I know um, some people have handed me checks today, and I know a lot of people are um, dropping, making donations and contributions, and you're bringing tears to my eyes. This really can't happen without the support of you. We don't get state or federal funding unless it's through a grant or something like that. So it's really you make this possible. And it's inspiring to me every day to see what we can do when we care and work together. So I hope that I hope this is inspiring to you because it is to me every single day. I also wanted to mention that you know this this year we are treating lots of patients. I think we're probably around a thousand already, if not exceeding that. Well, when when the dust settles, we'll count. <laughs> uh, we we do document each and every patient, um, both to keep track of their medical care, but also to share reports with uh, various agencies. So we will get a final tally. <laughs> you may have heard that we've been treating a record number of eagles at one time. We've never had seven eagle patients at once until this year. And three eagles have already been released so far. Four are currently in treatment. And that's really exciting. And that's something that our supporters make possible. An um, eagle in the first month of care runs around $3,000 um, for treatments and diagnostics, and et cetera. So thank you. We need to, Jess is always watching birds and watching our patients and in the sun that bird was getting hot so I needed her to say let's get him in the shade. Um, what else did I want to say? Yeah. In just a moment we will be releasing this hawk and this hawk 
was found by a person named Celeste. So people, individuals find animals. I'm guessing a number of you have found an animal and gotten it to us. Um, one of our volunteers, Tim Kerr, helped capture and transport the bird. And then his volunteers and others, um, of our, and including our professional staff who's overseeing this treatment, it had a broken wing, probably from a collision with a car, we're not sure. And now it's going to have a new life as it's completed rehabilitation is ready for release. This hawk is special to me because it's come through um, a lot of treatment, needed physical therapy. It's also special to me because we are releasing it in honor of a dear friend, an amazing woman, and Tamarack volunteer, Danielle Moffat, um, who recently passed after 11, uh, after nine years living with cancer. So Danielle loved, loved, loved Tamarack, loved presenting our raptors, um, our hawks and our owls and falcons with the public. I've never seen her be more radiant than when she had a hawk or an owl on the glove. And she is dearly missed. She requested, she had some time to think about this, she requested that after her passing, after her physical passing, that a hawk be released in her honor. And she also asked that I share a prayer. She and I share native ancestry, and so she requested that I share um, a prayer in my tradition, which is Shawnee. So I recognize we come from many walks, and many traditions, uh, but if you'll take a moment with me to um, share a prayer, and it's fine that some people pray by bowing their heads, some people don't pray, that's also okay. <laughs> some people look to the sky, and um, so this is for Danielle. Megwech Gisomuchon Kuchis de Nishna Sashawandase Nabe Chena Shamas Chena Sasas. Thank you, Creator, for this beautiful day, for this gathering of good friends, of our brothers and sisters. Megwech Aten Danielle Moffat, Apakatamsa, Jaina Sawangataha, Jaina Kioswa. Thank you for our dear sister, Danielle, a woman of amazing strength of strong heart and beauty. Miigwechatin Manitu Danielle Miigwechatin Gichi Kasheke Miigwechatin Piloshi Akiyotswa Onan. Thank you for Danielle's spirit which flies free like this hawk on the wings of this bird. Thank you that her spirit has peace and is soaring this day. Kuschis denishnas megwech atn gibadisuen washita. Thank you for this day. May each person here be blessed. May we walk in the way of life as it was intended, honoring all our relations. Onan. So we will get ready to release this red-tailed. In Shawnee, red-tailed is kyak kyak for the name they give themselves when they are calling kyak kyak. So we let them name themselves kyak kyak. Um, so Jess is going, we have permission from our neighbors to go into a cow pasture. <laughs> um, but it will be easier for you to see from that elevation, and she will be able to, um, the hawk will be able to pick up the wind and take flight. So at this time, Jess can go over, and um, the family of Danielle is welcome to accompany Jess. So before release, he's going to, called striking the hood, removing the hood. And he's going to get a little lively at that point. Oh, so happy. Ready? All right, here we go.
joining us now, Chef Lisa, Lisa Beck. So Lisa, the Tamarack Wildlife Refuge here, I, I thought it was out at Tamarack, but it's actually by Woodcock. Woodcock, it's yes. Over, it's off, just off of North Main Street, off of Route 86. Mm -hmm. And what a, what a cool thing. I mean, the, they take injured, you know, mostly birds, but they have even, even other injured animals or whatever, heal them up and right. all that kind of stuff, and then release them. And so, and, and of course, people will, will be, you know, uh, will have been able to see all, all of that going on. But what a cool thing. I, I was really impressed with that. Yeah, and they're they do a lot for the injured animals oh, and my. to get them back to rehabilitate them and get them back into wildlife and it's a good thing it's like really a hawk nice. that gets hit by a car, car or whatever yeah. you know it's yeah um and broken bone and they're able to heal up the bone and you know a whole bunch of lost feathers and i guess eventually the feathers do grow back i right? guess whenever i they guess are. they do what an impressive situation wow. wonderful well, wonderful what was your thought for a recipe today well it's a bird okay not a hawk <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do some turkey um this is a really fun recipe fast one skill it when you're in a hurry, a healthy, um, I am using ground turkey. Okay. So you could use ground chicken, you could use um, really whatever you want, but <clears throat> that's what we're doing. It's called egg roll in a bowl. Wow. Okay. So um, okay. we've got our, we've got our uh, skillet. It's been heating. We're going to put our one pound of turkey, ground can turkey in there. You sure okay. can. That sizzle says that something. That sizzle says we're ready to cook. So we're gonna brown that. And I would be careful in the middle. My pan's starting to get a little old. It likes to stick in the middle. Um, as soon as it is browned, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shave a little bit of um, ginger over the top of it. Now I learned something new with ginger because when you buy fresh ginger root, um, it comes in a package of a whole bunch of big roots. And I oh. was like, well, what do you do with all of that? I only need a little bit. So I read something, and this is proven to be a really cool thing. So you chop it up into pieces about an inch long, and you throw them in the freezer. There's no need to peel oh, them. And okay. then when you're ready to use them, you just get out Take your little, little, little shaver. Thing yeah, yeah. Okay. and you just use them. I so like now that. I have a whole bunch in the freezer for my future dishes because Perfect. I would have thrown that out. I would have known what to do with it. How about so, that? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we're just browning the, the ground turkey. And so now browning is not actually going to be brown. It's no, just going to get rid of all the pink, right? It's, it's the other white meat, right? Okay, yeah, right, <laughs> so, sure. Uh, yeah, so it's it's just going to be white. Um, and uh, you can you can double this, you can triple this. You can, like I said, you can use sausage. You can do whatever you want. But it's the idea of what an egg is inside of an egg roll. And I think a lot of times they use pork. Okay. But which is the other other white meat? Sure. <laughs> so, okay. But we're using ground chicken because I that's what I use, and we're low on venison, okay. being the time of year that it is. So uh, we actually, just, the season started a couple days ago. It did when it was a full moon. So I don't know how the hunters feel about it, but the hunters in my house, they were going to go out the first day, and they said it was so bright they didn't think the deer were moving, so they didn't go. I, I thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I thought the same thing. Yeah, I, that must be like the way it is. I just hear these things. I don't know if my, they make it up or if this is just the way it is. I think that's. I, I, I've I've read that and I've heard yeah. people talk about that or whatever. Yeah. 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 So we're low on venison. I actually am not sure there's much, if any, left in my freezer. So our alternative is ground chicken. I'll bet you there'll be more venison coming. Uh, well, we <laughs> sure hope so. Um, I'm going to have to get on those hunters and okay. let them know that I do expect a freezer full, but we sure hope so. So when I rub the bottom, it does come off a little bit. Yeah, that's, a and little that's, bit a, that's sticking yeah, there. Yeah, it's okay if it's sticking a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think it's time for a new pan. But what I'm going to do while you're doing that is I'm just going to grate some of the ginger oh. on the top. Okay. Okay. Which is going to give us a really nice gingery smell. Interesting flavor. Yeah, because this is kind of an Asian thing. Sometimes it's hard to get that out of there. Just got to get as much as I can in there. Well, we're about half pink and about half not pink now. Yeah. You're going to start smelling that, Dwayne. I do smell it, yes. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have to use the whole thing. Just want to get the smell going. I think it's all. One more time here. Just no, I can definitely smell it. It's definitely working. Yeah. Ginger's a great flavor. It's also healthy, too. Um, everything in this recipe is healthy. Okay. Um, and I, I'm always all about that. So, so we're, we're getting there. 
a little bit of oh, pink. I, that just smells a tiny great. little bit of pink left. Yeah. Oh, I love that smell. The next thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to give that another minute, is we're going to add about two tablespoons of sesame seed oil. I like the toasted sesame seed okay. oil. And about two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Okay. And um, just incorporate that in there, and then we'll add our next ingredients. You're doing a great job, There's Dwayne. just a couple little bits of pink yeah, here. just a little bit. And we're going to cook it longer, so okay. even if there's a slight... Tiny, tiny little bit yeah, still. Yeah, we'll okay. be okay, but... Okay. Um, Actually, there's a long... Remember, I want to get away okay. from you there. It's like if you keep rolling them around, then they get in the pink goes. Yeah, they get they get that surface area. Oh, I love that ginger smell. It sure is. So while great. you're doing that, I'm going to add. I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay. I might give it a little bit more. How about that? Sure. Good. And we'll add the sesame seed oil. And let that incorporate in. All those smells are really cool. Yeah, this is a nice Asian dish, really. Um, we're using a lot of the, the same things that they would. Again, in an egg roll, I think it's pork, but um, we're using ground chicken today. The other bird. The other bird, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It won't be too long till we'll have some we'll have some pheasant birds That's for, right. for a new recipe. Some new recipes, yep. This coming Saturday is actually the start of the youth hunt. And oh, so is it really? I'll get out there with some cameras and we'll get the cameras on some of the some of the young guys. And, and uh, yeah, last year was so cool. We had uh, Brian Pilartic on to get his first, right. his first bird That's ever. Right, that, was yeah. so, that was so cool. Well, I hope the rain holds off for you guys because so we've too. had this gorgeous weather, but. A couple years back when, when it was real cold and rainy, the, the birds did not want to get off no, the ground, no. and the dog ended up grabbing a bunch of them on the ground. I remember that. I a, think we a, talked about that on one of the shows. A few, a few of the, a few of them got in the air and got shot and everything. Yeah. And, and um, but several of them got grabbed on the ground because they they just like they tuck they tuck down and yeah. you know they yeah yeah they they want to stay warm yeah they they don't yeah. feel the need to fly or get away. So. so now it's really hot today, but it's supposed to be like back to normal fall temperature. Yeah, in the 50s this weekend. And hopefully it's not pouring down, right? Hopefully it's just a little bit of sprinkling or whatever. I hope not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add now. This is just a bag of coleslaw mix. Okay. Uh, the tricolor coleslaw mix. So we're just going to add the whole thing in there. Okay. Which gives us some more substance. Now we, it can get, it can get. We want to mix it in. It can get hot too. Okay. Yep, mix it in. All Cook right. it down. It also calls for an extra carrot or two. So I did shred an extra carrot. Oh, these actually okay. two carrots. But we'll let that cook down a little bit and then we'll we'll add it in. So when the coleslaw mix cooks, does it like kind of turn it, loses its color? It, and... it, uh, it gets a little more translucent and it okay. cooks down a little bit. So but that just smells so good. Oh, it's wild. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, super easy. Like I said, you're not really messing up a lot of dishes. You've got your skillet. That's it. Um, and not a ton of ingredients. Very easy. You don't have to even shred the coleslaw or even really the carrots. You can buy them wow. all shredded. So, but you look, you know, you've got your purple. It's okay if you get it out of there. The purple cabbage, the carrots, the uh, ca uh, regular cabbage, those are super foods. I mean, those are really healthy things and you're mixing them with ground chicken. You've got the light sodium. You've got the, a little bit of sesame seed oil. Um, we're going to add, of course, the two shredded carrots and we're going to add I diced up two uh, green onions for okay. that extra flavor at the end. And you see it's starting to cook down. Oh, it is. Yes, it definitely is. And, and really, this, make, this is a great, easy way to you know satisfy people. You've got your meat, you've got your veggies, and a lot of veggies. All, that. all together. Yep. All yep. in one. Yep. I think I'm going to add the carrots in. OK. And give it some more color. Now, in that. In that casserole that you put in there, there was a tiny little bit of shredded carrots in there. A little bit, now yeah. You, now you've got a, a decent amount in Yes, there. yep, and I think that's the idea, um, just to give it some more. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so really it's just a matter of cooking everything down. You know, it doesn't take very long, as you can see. It really um, doesn't. And then, you know, you, you don't need, it doesn't have to be super crunchy, so you want it to cook down so it's somewhat soft. And then, um, I mean, seriously, we'll be ready to taste this shortly. And I do uh, put a little bit of soy sauce over the top when we're done just to give it a little extra. Okay. 
I think I'm gonna throw in the green onions. Now, does the turkey come ground already, or do you yes. have to grind it yourself? No. You can, you can get it ground. You can get it ground. Okay. You can get ground chicken, okay. ground turkey. Um, you can get ground pork. I mean, really, you can okay. get any meat ground. You don't have to do it yourself. And if they don't have it, I think depending on where you go, I think certain butchers would be able to do that for okay. you. So now look at you out of that green. Now it kind of takes on a little different look. You've it got does, yeah. a little bright in there. And I'd say really we're gonna I'm gonna get ready to eat, but we're gonna give it about two, three more minutes. We'll add a little bit more soy sauce to the top and it's gonna be ready. So this is only taking just a real short amount of time here yeah. to, to do this. Wow. That's amazing. I don't know. Do we need a fork or a spoon? I think we'll do forks. Yeah, I think a fork probably works. Yeah, this is a fast. You know, we're always in a hurry for dinner. <laughs> and, I know what you mean. <laughs> you know, the million dollar question, what's for dinner? This is, when you're in a hurry, this is a nice one to do. And it's not, you know, you're not messing up a whole bunch of dishes to make a meal. Put everything in one. Kind of like all in one pan here. Yeah. You're doing a great job, Dwayne. It's very colorful. And it really is. As we always say, it smells fantastic. Oh, it sure does. <laughs> we get we have that advantage. Smell a vision. Smell a vision. Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna have you switch the last couple of minutes with this spoon. All the all the red is gone now. Yep, there you go. And it's not sticking on the bottom of the pan. Nothing no, is, nothing I is sticking. No, because you've got the liquid of the vegetables. Okay. Plus we put some oil in there. And the oil, there. I think the oil, yeah. yeah. I, th I think Make, the oil helps keep it, it from sticking, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that, the mm. bottom. You can see, you can see like where it's been, you know, it's cooking down at the bottom and you're bringing it up. Another minute, Dwayne, and we are ready to taste. Wow. I've had several people talk to me about, oh, can you guys come up with a cookbook? I know, we should. You've heard that too? I've heard okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I've heard it. I think we're good. I'll take your spoon for you. Thank you. All these left-handed spoons I have in my oh, house. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. All right. Yes. So. This is a keeper. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? We'll do it in your bowl. I wanted to give you a little, a little bit, bit more, soy, more sauce. soy sauce. Just a little shot. Okay. And I'll put a little bit in there. I always do a little bit at the end. And I'm going to turn this off because we really don't need it anymore. Let me get some for myself. I love that green onion. Mm -hmm. Oh, love the green onion at the mm -hmm. end. There Thank you. you go. Thank you. It's a hot one, so be careful. Mm. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's great. Mm. Mm. I love all the vegetables in there with the turkey. It's so healthy. Mm. Really healthy. I think it could use probably a, a little bit more soy and a little bit more um, sesame seed oil, but you can play with that to your liking. I like a little more of that. Okay. Some people don't. I think um, it's, I think it's they, great. It calls for about two tablespoons each, but I like the saltiness of the soy sauce. So Great. Well, Lisa, thank you for the awesome recipe. You're welcome. And thank you to Tamarack Wildlife Center for their for their everything that they do. That's oh, an amazing thing that they have. Fantastic job. Yeah. And thank you to the folks at home for joining us today on Crawford County Outdoors. And I am finishing my casserole. Me too. Here. Me mm. too.